I'm Bevan Valant. I'm a chef, artist, and food for me represents laughter, enjoyment, and family. Food should be creative. It should be full of heart. It should be punchy with flavour. I want to be able to link people back with their own food connection and help them become better cooks, better growers, and enjoy their own food stories. I'm on a mission to show people how local, homegrown, and sustainable food can be awesome. Welcome to uh, Food Toys Fish Tales. Uh, I'm Bev Varland. Got here Pete Hilke. Say good day, Pete. Good day, guys. How are you going? So Pete, a uh, very renowned uh, seafood chef. So we're actually hoping he's going to bring the luck today. Are you going to bring the luck, Pete? <laughs> <laughs> All I can say is, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> so we've had a bit of a comedy er errors here this morning. We've lost an umbrella in the water. Uh, this line here <laughs> spilled up within the first five minutes of being here. We fixed that, and then we spilled the next line, and then I lost another lure. So it's been a great start to the day, but we're ever hopeful, aren't we, Pete? Ah, uh, look, you, you have to eat. Persistence, people, <laughs> persistence. Persistence. Doesn't matter where you are, it's all about persistence. Exactly. So we're gonna keep fishing, and soon we're gonna bring some beautiful fish to the table to cook with. That's the goal, at least. actually come up to uh, Wombat Dam today. So Wombat Dam is about nine kilometres, uh, I'll say southeast of Dalesford. It's built in the 60s, Pete. Um, the beautiful thing about this lovely place here is that um, it's a pretty unknown fishery and they like to stock it. So every now and again, and last year we've probably had about a thousand fish put in here. Now bearing in mind it's about 700 megalitres of water. Um, with a thousand fish, uh, sort of a naturally occurring population of redfin as well. So, um, have you eaten redfin before? No, I haven't. I haven't. Look, no. it's one of the very few fish that I have not eaten. Yeah, look, it's, it's fascinating. It's got a real dirty name. It's got a, you know, people go, oh, yuck, redfin. But I tell you what, it's as far as eating fish go, it's actually really nice. Uh, by, by the time we finish cooking one, <laughs> one once we catch one, by the time we finish cooking it, it's going to be absolutely That's going to be fantastic, exactly right. Exactly. So they're beautiful, beautiful little fish. Um, brown trout, rainbow trout in here, they're the main things, all your salmonoid kind of species. Um, I'm going to get out of the way while Pete casts. And that's pretty much it. So we're going to, I reckon we'll probably move shortly. Uh, that wind's picking up, which is a bit nasty. And... Uh, We'll move up and we'll find some weed beds and hopefully we'll land one of those monster trout. Yeah, sounds good. G'day guys, welcome to Food to Eat. I'm here with Chef Pete Hilke. How you doing, man? Oh, I'm absolutely fantastic, Pete. How are you? Great, mate, great. So we're here at the Wombat Dam up near Dalesford. We're cooking an amazing rainbow trout straight from this water, the lemon quinoa. Oh, anyway guys, what we're going to do today with this beautiful trout is I'm going to score it. That just aids in the cooking process. So what I'm going to do is just run the knife over and probably give it round about, about three centimetres in between each score. What that's going to do is once the actual fish is cooked, that will just come together really, really beautifully right in the pan. And when we serve that with the quinoa, it's going to come together. Yeah. Then we can just peel it right off. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. peel off the beautiful steam will uh, absolutely be lovely all right so here we go so we're just going to score this now i know look certain people turn around and say oh you should you should only score so far right or wrong just score the fish right next what we're going to okay. do we've got some beautiful chili oregano rub now this one you can easily make at home but i make this one myself it's got cracked pepper sea yeah, salt yeah, right, oregano right. and it's got the chili flakes oh yum yum so it's going to literally yeah. jump onto your yeah, tongue and go back. Yeah. Love it. Boom. <laughs> and it's just like popcorn going off in the palate. And it's just going to pop, 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 pop. And that's exactly what you want. So all I'm going to do is just put a little sprinkle over the yeah, fish. Lovely. You rub him in, get him in that oh, score yeah. marks. Just really just oh, get oh, in nice. the score marks. Yeah, yeah. Hit the cavity of the fish as well. We want to get this flavour right throughout. Yeah, lovely. 
I always like to cook my fish around about a medium heat, no hotter than that. And you'll hear so many people say you should cook it hot, mm, you should mm, cook it, mm, you know. Look, medium heat, especially on a pan like this. If I'm actually cooking on a barbecue, however, I'll actually do it on a low heat. It takes a little bit longer, mm, bit, but right, I'll tell you what, right. you get really, really great you results. You really want to keep that moisture in that flesh, don't you? That's, that's yeah, the goal of fish, isn't it? exactly right. If you overcook it, it's going to go leathery, yeah. it's going to be horrible. Beautiful. So what you want to make sure, especially with your pan as well, just with your olive oil that you've got in there. Give it a really good coating. I love that, Pete. My hands are warm, <laughs> I don't know about yours. <laughs> and it warms the hands up yeah, as well. But give the pan a really good coating. Nice. Because I want this skin to crisp up a bit as well. We've literally swapped our hot pan across there, so she's in front of Pete. I've got the fish, go for it, man. All right, so guys, this is it. And you can just yeah. hear it in that pan. Hear it's just that. starting to sizzle now. And that's exactly what you want. It's gonna take around about four to five minutes on both sides. As I said, on a medium to low heat, it will be perfect. So a question for you, Pete, for the guys at home. If you keep the tail, keep the bone in, keep the head on, is that going to improve the flavour? Look, I, yeah, look, it does. Mm, it mm, does. Mm. Because you've got the whole fish. I mean, if you take the fillets off, yeah, they're absolutely beautiful. If you catch it fresh, it's going to be oh, yeah, absolutely naturally. glorious anyway. However, if you keep everything intact, it's even better. So Love it. when your fish is going, mate, I'm going to click over here. I'm going to do a really simple quinoa. Quinoa, nice. obviously, it's a modern superfood. People go a bit nutty over it, all health people. Right, all that is there, I have got nice red quinoa there. Now, I've boiled him for about 15 minutes. Let him simmer and drain him. Have a taste of that, Pete. It's got a real nutty, it's a real sort of nutty earthiness to it. And I think it's going to go really well with our freshwater trout. Now, I'm going to keep it super simple. Oh, super that's simple, right. That's damn good. All right, here we go. A lemon. This is all we need, man. Juice of one full lemon. In now, there, now, Bev, do, yeah, can mate. you do, explain to the people, why do you put your hand like that and let the lemon well, juice fall it's through? it's funny you should say that, Pete, because I just did it with the first one and I put all the <laughs> seeds through the quinoa. So that's a great way. That's our natural sieve. Okay, let's get it down there. Now, I've got in here a bit of my own concoction. I know you've got your beautiful concoction there. I've got this little concoction of mine, which is called a salt and pepper boom. Boom! <laughs> boom! So it's got pink Himalayan sea salt, rock salt, peppercorn, dill, lemon myrtle, mustard seed. Nice. All right, let's Love get it in there. Give it a nice helping. Now I'm looking at that and going, yum, yum, yum. Exactly, exactly, right. Let's just stir him around, get our hands into it. This is all we need. Lemon juice, quinoa, and a little bit of seasoning. Use your fingers, Pete. We're out in the bush. We don't have a spoon. No, that's right. And the great thing is when you've been handling fish, at least mm. I get the flavours before everybody else. Yeah, exactly right. We've got a, just a real bite, lemony mm. bite, isn't it? That's it. Oh, Simple. that's that's absolutely beautiful. And I do have that taste of um, trout on my fingers. <laughs> we're, we're set to go. <laughs> just flip the fish. <laughs> flip All right, flip the bloody fish, So Pete. here goes. Now. <laughs> so, <laughs> flip the bloody right. fish, Pete. Okay, so here, here goes, oh, guys. Nice. It's looking good, looking good, oh, looking good. Very nice. Whoa, so, there she goes. Uh, there we oh, go. Yum. There we go. So. Look at that. There we go. Now, guys, that is absolutely looking the bee's knees and cat's pyjamas oh, when it comes to trout. Look at that there. Yeah, absolutely Stunning. superb. So I'm going to dress this a little bit. I'm going to just put that across the side. I'm going to make a nice, we're going to put our fish across that way, yeah? Yeah, beautiful. All beautiful. right, I'm going to do a nice little pile of our lemon red quinoa. The time for you. Okay, so look guys, all I'm going to do, once again, it's going to be really, really delicate with it. I'm only going to take a couple of leaves off and just put them where I actually scored the yeah, fish nice. because you don't want to overdo it but just going to give it just something a little bit pretty there and we that, go thanks mate it's only a couple of leaves over and those little the, the oil from those leaves are going to seep straight that's in that exactly flesh, right that's so, spot on so what we're going to do yeah. you just get the tail the head and over the top guys there it is we've got an instant little camp love oven it, love it a little bit of variegated oregano lovely whoa it's all getting away from me that's all right a little bit of that. I've got these beautiful pineapple sage flowers. Have a smell, man. Oh. Just delicate, yeah? Woo! And all we want to do is we want to break the colour up a bit, yeah? Wait a minute, it, it smells like I'm in the exotics here. Oh, mate, it is. Look, a little couple of bits of spearmint. Okay. Come on. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on. Oh, look at that. Now, what we're going to do, we're just moving back around. Yeah, nice. Now, as I said, guys, now, see this stuff in the bottom of your pan? Scrap that off. Yeah, yeah. Because what you can do is you can cook that up further and really crisp that up. Oh, yeah. And it's really, really beautiful when you crisp that and put that with your trout. But then what we do is we go like this. You get some of these crispy bits. Yeah, mate, yeah. Right? 
and then what we do is you just drizzle those over the top. Oh, look at that! Right, that's what it's all about, man. I'll tell you what, bird, this yeah, is yeah. this is the bee's knees in cat's pajamas. Mate, this is a wombat dam trout. This is fantastic. Yeah, love it. And then what I like to do, drizzle. guys, a little no. drizzle of olive, yeah. olive oil over the top. Oh, look at that! Absolutely beautiful. There we go. It's our beautiful wombat rainbow trout with a lemon oh. quinoa salad. Love it, chef. Bev, thank you. Love it. It's mate. been an absolute pleasure to be Welcome here. Welcome to Food to Eat, mate. Oh, I'm breaking the set. Welcome <laughs> to Food to Eat. <laughs> Alright, let's get into this. Alright. Look how beautiful and pristine it is here. We've come up to the dam wall. You can see Pete's getting up over the edge here. There's a little bit of deeper water just around here um, and it's known that some of the trout will actually come in here. Now I've been here before and there's been little redfin that have popped up through this water. It's quite shallow in here but they come in to feed and as you can see she's still and she's a bit glassy. There's a bit of movement across there on the water. We're going to try this and uh, see if we land something. I think it's not far off now. Got a bit of a rock there. There we go. There we go. Action shot. Oh. Woo! Oh yeah! Oh, yeah where, hell where yeah, baby! Where is it? Hell yeah! Where's your rod? There hell it is. Hell yeah! Hell yeah! Oh. Sweat's coming off. Hat comes off. Splash! Oh! oh. 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 I missed it. Oh. And again and again. Oh. Woo! There we go. And I've got this. Yeah, he's a big one. He's a big one. I'll tell you what. There's nothing better than the good old wombat damn rockfish. They're mean, they're ugly, and they, oh. <laughs> you son of a gun. Oh. And if I brought it up, that's what you'd see. Oh. <laughs> G'day guys, welcome back to Food to Eat. Bev Varlin with you. Pete Hilke's here with a guest. Boom, boom. Here we are, big boom today. Right, we're at Wombat uh, Dam up near Dale's. I almost forgot where we were, Pete. <laughs> so this is our second recipe of the day. I'm gonna cook you, mate. It's a really chilly, chilly day here, yeah? It's cold. Your head's cold. Mate, the bean, I just took it off with the camera. <laughs> We're going to cook a beautiful breakfast risotto. And you might go, risotto, oh. breakfast. Well, think about it, mate. What do you have for breakfast? You have eggs. Yeah. You have bacon. Yeah. You have a bit of fried onions. Done. Beautiful. Risotto's got all that goodness. I'm going to even whack some eggs in at the end. It's going to be pretty stunning. Right. All right. First things first, Ooh. I've prepared everything before I've come. Nice. Obviously, we're out camping. That's what we want to do. All right. Bit of oil into that pan. We want quite a bit. We don't want this to stick. We want to give it a nice, yeah, yeah, nice flavour, a bit of colour. Get so a crackle going. When you do a risotto, what yes, consistency mate? are you looking for there, Dad? You know what? With this one, because we're going to be doing something a little bit different, I'm going to keep this one quite liquidy on top. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. what I'm going to do right at the end, I'm going to crack those eggs in and let them poach ah. in that beautiful stock. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, mate, love your thinking. You know what? I'm, I'm becoming more and more addicted to risotto the more I'm cooking. You know what? Nice. I just absolutely love it. All right, we get the oil going in. It's nice and warm with it. That beautiful Aussie olive oil, and you can smell it. You get a good whiff of that, yeah? Oh, guys, that is Gorgeous. absolutely Stunning. magnificent. All right, in this little thing, I've got our beautiful basic mirepoix, which is our onion, our celery, our carrots. Now, I've thrown in our bacon. Now, if you wanted to get really a little bit sexy when you're camping, Pete, I know you like to get a bit sexy, sexy when you're camping, you know? I'm feeling it now. <laughs> I'm feeling it now. You could get some speck. Or something like that, yeah, right. which yeah, is a yeah, bit yeah. more cured, so you don't have to keep it under ice or anything like that. Yeah, and yeah. that's a really great thing to take camping with you. All right, let's get all that in there. You can hear that crackle straight away. Let's get that around. That tub I'm done with, go. Now guys, just to let you know, we do actually go around and pick up the trash after he's thrown it. Exactly, eventually. Especially when you're in Venezuela. Venezuela, Venezuela. We've got a bit of a breeze around here at Wombat Dam, where are we? Wombat Dam, Wombat. folks! <laughs> we've put this beautiful bowl on here just to keep that heat in. So, let's get the steam going ready. Ready, Pete? Go! Oh, 
Well, that is all that. Oh, Thanks, mate, man. that is absolutely looking magnificent. So we're just softening it, really. We're getting the lovely flavours and the fat and that juicy smokiness yeah. that's coming out of that bacon. And, it, and it's, the onions? It, it's starting to go transparent, and yeah. that's exactly what you want. Exactly, exactly. Right. It's time to get our stock in. First of all, arborio rice. Now, there's probably about 15 different types of arborio rice you can get. This is just a simple, standard arborio rice. Let's get it all in. Hopefully in the fry pan. All right, like that. Let's just stir it around a little bit. Now, there's a little secret with risotto, as you, as you know, Chef, is we want to put hot stock into that, and that's yeah. the key. You never put cold stock into a risotto? No. Because it's not going to work. All right. We'll get an even sort of base around like that. All right, as it just so happens, ladies and gents, we're going out camping. I've got a flask. I'm going to give you a taste. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I'm going to give you a taste. Heat. Some beautiful. Oh, now this looks hot good. Hot stock. That'll warm you up. Pete. Look at that. Look at that. A little bit of uh, stock, a little bit of uh, lemon myrtle. Lovely. Oh my God, folks. Get that I'll in. tell you what. I'm so warm now, I can leave the beanie off <laughs> and say, he's cold. Everyone's cold, but I am feeling so good. You got hot stock in you, Chef. Oh, this is absolutely beautiful. So you made this yourself? Yeah, a little bit of veggies in yeah. some water, boil it around for about an hour, throw in a little bit of lemon myrtle at the end. Stunning. Wow, that's beautiful. amazing. We're going to let him sit for probably about 20 minutes. Every now and again, we're going to pop in. Now, because we've got this breeze around and it's really quite chilly, I want to capture that heat. So we're going to put that on. Now, this is kind of a bit like a, as we say, a camp oven, a bit yeah. more like a paella, you could say. Yeah. Let's get it on like that. Now that's going to bring to the boil with that really, really hot stock. Beautiful. And she's going to be sexy in about 10 minutes or so. We'll give a stir and then we'll finish it. Done. Done and done. Forks ho. Love you guys. <laughs> Food to eat. No, that's it. This guy rocks. Oh. Welcome back guys. It's been about, I don't know, half an hour. It's been cooking in there. Slowly. Trickling along. It's time for the reveal, Pete. Are you ready for it, man? Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. I need this. I need it now. Oh, wow, man. look at that. And you can see in there, let's give him a stir. Wow, look at that. That's it's starting beautiful. to get sticky. Oh, yeah, that yeah. beautiful starch is coming out of that rice. Yeah, that's gorgeous. Great time there. You can see that liquid's still there, mate. Yeah, and yeah. that's what I want. I really want that liquid. That's really important. Okay, we were talking about breakfast before, yeah? Beautiful little egg. Let's get him in there. One there. Beautiful. He's going to cook away. Beautiful. Let's throw another one over here. Beautiful. We love it. We're going to let them cook for another five minutes. I'm going to whack our lid back on. And Bob's your uncle. Well, I'll tell you what, my uncle's actually John. John. But, you know, if yours is Bob, that's oh. fine. Well, no, mine's Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, Bob, John. Bob, John. John. So, back in, it's been about uh, five minutes. We've got that egg going in there, Pete. I'm going to pull our little convection oven off, man. Here we go. Nice. Hey, look at that. Oh, well, folks. All I can say is, hopefully you can see that. That yeah. is absolutely divine. A little beautiful, soft, soft yeah. egg in there. Got a good flavour. Right, I'm going to dress it now. I'm going to make okay. it a little bit sexy, a little bit great. So I've got the salt and pepper, boom. A little bit on top, a little bit of extra flavour. On top of that, love it. Okay. We love the boom, folks. We love the boom. <laughs> we love a bit of boom. I'm going to dress it with a little bit of olive oil, just to give a little bit more flavour as well, which is going to go well with the eggs. Look at that on top of there. Magnificent. It's going to be great. It. We've got that little bubble going in here, letting all the smell nice. out for us. It's time to get a little bit crazy. In here, Pete, i got some air-dried beetroot powder. Air-dried beetroot? Okay. Now, do you do this yourself? No, I don't, mate. I actually buy this. Okay. It's really hard to do it. You can't actually do this at home. But this is a bought product, which is stunning. Now, what she says, I'll open her up. Ready? And which way is the wind going? We're about uh, to find out. If I get covered in beetroot dust, <laughs> here we go. All right. Hey, look at that. Beautiful wow. pink. Have a, have a whiff. Oh my God, that's that, stunning. Is, that is amazing. Whoop. There we go, we know where it's going. All right. I just want to sprinkle a little bit across, yeah? Yeah, beautiful. I'm going to just do it like this, it's a bit easier. Yeah. It's going to give a bit of color and it's going to give a bit of flavor. Have a taste of that, Pete. Stunning stuff. That with a little bit of nasturtium on there like that. I've got a little bit of thyme. There we go, a bit of parsley. Look at this. Beautiful. Stick. Look at that, beautiful pineapple sage in there like that. We've got some flowers. Some nice, beautiful dressed herbs on top of that. And that's basically it, Pete. The most stunning breakfast risotto. Camp it out, Wombat Dam. We love it, we love Wombat Dam. Hey, you know what? 
and a big thanks to Bev for having me on the show today. It's absolutely fantastic. Great to have man. you, Pete. Great to have you. Thank All you. right, let's go. Let's dig in. Oh, I pop. Oh, 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 shit, that's hot. <laughs> <laughs> If you ever, ever, ever in your life take something out of a hot pan, <laughs> make sure you let it cool first. <laughs> Do not be a fool. <laughs> be a fool. And eat it while it's really, really hot. Otherwise, you spin off and go down the road. <laughs> it's Bev, Food to Eat, Pete Hilke, special guest. Catch you guys soon. See you guys. See ya. See ya. So there's the end of another awesome Food to Eat adventure. So as we're packing up the car, ready to go to find our next food destination, the real fishermen turned up, who actually look like they know what they're doing. Look at this guy. He's even got camo on so the fish don't see him. Amazing. Check out the next episode of Food to Eat.